Hello, welcome back to European Autocraft Studios, American Studios, sort of. We're working on the uh, 2006 Z06 uh, uh, Corvette. We're pulling the engine out today, and I know we're going to get it out today. Um, there's a lot to do, uh, a lot of stuff I haven't seen before. Not really a Corvette expert, but you know, the right manuals and the right information and the right tools, we can do it. So join us and watch to the end while we get the engine out of this Corvette. Normally we wouldn't work on something like this, but uh, it came from a very good customer of ours, uh, his good friend. The car is in need of some work, and um, he just didn't trust anyone else to work on it. So um, with that recommendation, we had to work on it. So uh, we'll learn something new. Uh, it's just hardware. Um, this particular car needs a lot of work. You saw we have the transmission apart, which I actually never did get around to showing you the transmission in pieces. But... Uh, maybe we'll do that today. Uh, the engine has to come out. This this car, it's only 27,000 miles. The interior, the body is beautiful. But somebody's had the engine out and butchered everything. I mean everything. So we want to bring this car back to its natural, uh, <laughs> natural uh, beauty, I guess, and uh, originality because it's deserving of that. So we have, if you look around the engine bay, we have some emission controls disconnected over here. Uh, why? I mean, we've got a crankcase breather just spewing crankcase ventilation gases under the hood. That's not good. We have, I don't know if you can see down inside the hole there, down we have all kinds of transmission lines, brake lines, things that have been disconnected, pried away, broken hold downs, you name it. Um, the car has just been butchered. Luckily, uh, we've got good bones to work with. Uh, otherwise, the car is, is in very, very nice condition. So, uh, we're learning along the way. Maybe you'll learn something too if you're not a Corvette guy. Um, we have the service manuals and everything we need for it. But, of course, things are assembled a little differently than uh, European cars. So, we're going to go ahead and try to get this engine out. At least get to the point where the engine's ready to come out. I've already done some work before we just start, decided to start doing uh, video work on this car. The uh, control arms are out, shock absorbers, the front spring is out. So the engine is sitting in the subframe cradle and we're gonna lower that whole thing out with the engine. That's really, I think, the best way to go. You can pull it up, but everything has to come out. It, it's a little bit more messy and I think uh, from what I've read and, and I've studied this, going down is the best way to go. Uh, we left the torque tube on, but the transmission and rear end is out. So we're going to lower this down with the torque tube. Yeah, not sure the best idea, but we're going to give it a shot. And um, Mr. Cameraman here, Nick, will hold the back of the torque tube while I lower the table down. And that should keep us balanced till we get it to the floor. We're going to give it a shot anyway. So I'm in the middle now. Um, the AC has been discharged and uh, I was leaking anyways. And we're just going to start getting stuff disconnected from the engine and moved away from the engine. They even put a new AC compressor in it, but there's only two bolts holding it on. So we have to fix all that. Wrong hardware everywhere. Uh, so I'm just going to get set up here, get some tools together and uh, get started. Uh, we're going to start by getting this out of the way. There's a really interesting little thing here. I've never seen this before. Let me pop this off and I'll show you. This is a, a little coupling lock. I remember we used to see these on the old on the Fords. They would have a double O-ring snap lock connector that you could release with a special tool. This one uses a little capturing device and, uh, and allows you to lock the tubes together. These O-rings are wiped out. There's oil leaking all over the place here, so we know we're going to be doing O-rings, and I think I'd like to replace the lock because it does come apart real easy. Um, I guess it's not supposed to. So we're going to start another pile of parts over here, somewhere. Parts everywhere. We also have um, heater hoses aren't going to go. We have a bunch of electrical connectors. It looks like we have another one of those AC line connectors here, but that's not in our way. So we're going to leave that one, but we will replace the O-rings anyways. 
Um, a lot of electrical stuff over here. How does that work? Okay, simple. I'm just going to disconnect everything. Some go with the engine, some don't. I, I really, I, I think it's the big harness here that goes across to the other side. But it's not going to hurt to just get this stuff out of the way. That, no, that goes the other way. Anything that goes in that direction, I'm going to disconnect because we don't want any trouble. No trouble. Okay. The battery cable to the fuse panel. That, I think, goes back to the battery itself, not the alternator. Um, we do have a cable on the alternator. We'll disconnect. Heater hoses. Oh, that's already disconnected from the engine. See, I already got a head start before you guys got here, so I hope you don't mind. Um, I think that goes into the really big harness. Well, hard to tell. I might have to disconnect all of this stuff. Man, what a mess. It's not routed the same as a European car. Boy, this stuff is a little bit not as... Not as neat, neatly packed. All right. You know what? I'm going to leave that a little bit till we get back underneath and take a look because I don't want to start taking stuff off that we don't have to. Might have to. Probably should look in the manual. That's <laughs> too easy. Okay. What's next? Uh, coolant pipes, hoses, hoses here. Uh, we drain the coolant already. I believe. I don't remember. It's been so long. The unfortunate thing is cars do stay around here too long. We get so busy and these big projects just don't get finished on time. Transmission coolant. Nothing was supported or mounted. I think these are going to have to come off as well. Maybe some of you guys have had Corvette engines out and can give us some pointers. I think I'll get these this line out of the way. Yeah, as you can see, the wiring's not attached to anything. amazes me to see this kind of workmanship. So the transmission lines are disconnected obviously from the transmission. These are the cooler lines for the for the uh, automatic section which I think was low on oil if I remember when we took it apart. These were this okay that's not good I think I'll have to go underneath to get this other cooler line off oxygen sensor wire zip tied to the air con air conditioning line um, man this thing would never pass emissions just plugs over here crazy well, we have to disconnect the fuel line. For that, we need these special tools. I've had these probably maybe 15 years, maybe longer. I think I've used them a few times. I don't work on American cars very much. That looks like this size. So these just go in and release, push in and release the spring lock. Looks good on paper, but... Pretty sure I have the right size. There it is. Wow. Yeah, we wouldn't find that on a German car. 
All right, get the alternator out of the way. Oh, we have to take the belt off, don't we? Oh, right, okay, so that's the tensioner for it. <laughs> I thought it was two different belts. Ah, yeah. Okay, that's better. We'll get that out in a little bit. 15? Yep. Okay. I'm just going to put that right back in when I get this out. I'm going to take the cable off. I believe most of the car is metric, or all of it. I'm not really sure, but I am getting some weird sizes here. Not the norm. I don't even know a norm. Except from Cheers. The only norm I know. Oh, and also the battery is disconnected. So, just so you're aware. Look, these weren't even attached to anything. And this one has been sitting on the exhaust for some time. That's the main battery cable. Well, the battery cable to the alternator, which goes to the battery. Um, it wasn't going to be much longer before we had a little smoke job under here. Not cool. So that was one of the things I had told him as this car is unsafe. Uh, with all this vapor under the hood, this, I mean, that's just not good. PCV, PCV right? I what that is. Okay, this is a vacuum for the brake booster that will Hang on here. I don't think that clamp is original either. Look at that. Just with a big tang on it like that. Okay. What else we got? We're gonna have to disconnect the steering link once we get the alternator out. And that is probably another 15. Yeah, music. Twenty-seven thousand miles, and the engine's got to come out because of butchery. But you'll get to follow along as we renovate this car and bring it back to original. I think he does want to send the cylinder heads out for porting and polishing, so we might do some minor stuff like that for him. But this is a street-driven car. We're not going to go too crazy. We're not building a race car here. Just making things a little bit better than they were. Oh, yeah, that was silly. I'll put it back in the back. Alternator. This bracket should make it down um, with the subframe. As long as everything's out of the way. All right, we're draining the uh, power steering fluid because we have to get the reservoir off. There was a bolt missing on the bracket, and I think we are going to take this bracket off because it hangs out pretty far, and it's probably going to hit the steering shaft on the way down. You missed a little bit. We had a little camera issue, camera overheating, but we're back with more lighting instead of the light on the camera, so... So there's our container containing the fluid. That's what that word means, contain, to contain something. Lesson there on contain, containment. Right, let me get rid of this, I'll be right back. Okay, word of the day, contain. Um, I, I don't even know if that's right. I guess I, I've got to look at a lot of pictures to see what's correct routing and all I see is a mess. Well, 
Wait till a little bit later in the video when we pan the shop from here, you can see a mess. All the cars that we're working on, so many and so many big projects, we have parts everywhere. Too much. Um, well, that's not good. So it looks like, <clears throat> oh, maybe if I turn this, I can get the bolts. I can't get this bracket off until the pump is out of the way because the bolt will hit the pulley. I can't get the pulley puller in there because of the brake ABS unit. So we have a high pressure line underneath that I can't get to unless I pull the pulley off. What do they expect me to do? Ah, it's foreign cars. Should be another bolt. Yeah, right here. Let me see if I can unbolt the pump from the bracket, lay that down, then I can get the bolts out of the bracket, pull that up, then I can get to the line, the high pressure line. Let's see how that works. That looks like a 13 millimeter. All you GM guys out there are laughing at me. You know how to do it. You just just watching me suffer. Okay, this car is situated on top of a drive-on lift, which is a great tool, but very difficult to work on like this. This is really made for work that requires a drive-on lift with the rolling jacks. This is um, all I have for now to work on this car, and it's a bit tedious. We won't complain about that too much. When it gets cold out, you're going to hear some complaining. That's for sure. This is... I thought the 911s were hard to work on. Oh my god, how did I get that in there? I need a camera on my socket. Feels like I'm on a bolt. Oh yeah. We got it. No, we didn't. Did we? Not all the way. Dirty rat. Not much more to go. Still not all the way, but you know, I can get these bolts out now. I don't know how many bolts there are. There's, there was one missing, but I see two. Two left. Am I correct? Or am I not? Ooh, that doesn't look right, does it? There's only about a quarter inch of thread going into that hole. Hmm. We have to check and see if these are correct. Can I get to this one? No, to the wrench. Quarter inch of thread on this big bracket. Maybe that's how GM does it, I don't know. I did get to drive this car. And really, a pretty impressive car. And we drove a uh, 2015 Z06 Corvette. And the power and the handling, it's just, just an amazing car. 
American. I'm not a. I just don't work on American cars, but I do like them. And this one really impressed me. The Z06, I mean. I used to have older Corvettes that were fun to drive, but this one, wow. Very powerful. So I hope we can get a good parts diagram and put everything back where it belongs with the correct hardware. That would be nice. is a bit stubborn it feels loose with the wrench but it's too tight to grab by hand I probably shouldn't have said anything about the quarter inch of thread in the top one and now I'm being paid back with 12 inches of thread in the head or block here It's going to go into the radiator if I'm not careful. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah, it's in the cylinder head, not the engine block. Okay, well, now. All right, we got the bracket out. Uh, pretty simple stuff. Uh, it worked just the way I thought. It was kind of cool. Uh, the, everything just separated and came out. Going back in might be a little more tricky. Um, at first, I thought that there was a connector for the whole engine harness, like on a Porsche would be, but it's not like that. Um, we have to individually disconnect the uh, injectors and the one connector for all the coils. The coil har little harness will stay in, but uh, the main one will come out. A couple things underneath, we just disconnected the crank sensor and things like that. Uh, real simple stuff very obvious uh, we do have a one cable that's bolted to the back of the bell housing that I can't really get a wrench into so we're gonna go up and we also have to disconnect the starter so we're gonna go up take a look underneath see what more we have to do uh, we have lots of clearance here now the yeah, bracket may have made it I don't know I'm glad we got it out though because we got to do a lot of cleaning too so we're going to go up, take a look underneath, and see what we can get underneath uh, removed so we can drop this engine out. Okay, we're under the car. Um, a disaster. Uh, so much stuff butchered up front, it just pains me to see it. But we're going to take the starter out. Uh, there's a ground wire above it I really can't get to. You can't really see very well back here, but that's okay. You won't have to see too much. Um, I actually just wanted to see what size nut this was on the starter battery cable the big cable and it was loose the wire is loose i don't know how it even started but um uh, but it was loose in this somebody cut the wire on the i'll show you that when i get this down somebody stripped back the insulation maybe it had a remote starter and they had to tap into the uh solenoid wire i don't know but Poor cars. Can make a living just fixing butchery. Okay, that's off the starter. Just two big, big battery wires went to the starter. One's a once is the battery cable to start, and the other one's like a power feed for something else. So that's fine. Oh, now you get to see the mess I work with every day. It's so disorganized, even with a cart. I need therapy, I think. Let's see if there are any shims. Shimmy, shimmy. No shims. Cute little thing. Put those back in. Oh, we have a... Oh, there's a crank sensor back here. I don't know what I disconnected up front. 
thought it was a crank sensor. What is that thing? Oh, that's for the uh, electronic ignition behind the fly uh, behind the pulley. All right. What do we have here now? Oh, another knock sensor. Oh, which is loose. Oh my God. Unbelievable. Loose. The knock sensor is loose. Those have to be torqued to a specific amount, uh, so they resonate just right when the engine has a a, a detonation uh, uh, destination detonation event. All right. Now there's a bracket up here holding this harness. One of the part of the harness that I can't get to. We're going to take the support back down again. We have this up to hold the whole assembly up. The, dry, the torque tube is sitting on this. So I want to pull the engine back a little bit. We can only go down so far. The service manual warns about crushing the firewall because it's fiberglass. So we can see pretty well under here how far we can go. So we're going to take the bolts out. We have a pull jack here that uh, we'll be able to lower the engine down. And I think I can get up and unbolt that strap that's holding the wiring harness. Golly knows if it's in the right place anyways. So, uh, we've got a lot of bolts. I hope you guys don't get bored and stay with me to the end, because we might get this engine out. We just might. Maybe, maybe. Okay, we got the uh, plate off. Actually, starter's out, plate's out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is down enough I can get, I should be able to get access to this bolt. Um, I'm going to try a chrome swivel. I think I can get on there. Uh, yeah, okay. It's on, but huh, will it break loose? Let's see. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Why would it be tight? Unfortunately, I... Oh, I can just get my finger in. I was looking at these. <laughs> GM does some crazy stuff. What is this all about? It's like it's like they took a bolt and just stuck it there. But no, it's threaded. Or is it not? It's a stud. I don't know. That's new to me. Crazy. Oh, oh. Okay. All right. There it is. I'll have to get that sorted later so I know where it goes. Okay, this now is off the bell housing. It's floating. Oh, what do we get over here? Oh, another bracket with a loose bolt. It's unbelievable. This bolt isn't tight. Uh, or is it? Oh, that's not even the right size. What do we have here? The bolt is tight, but I have a bad feeling about this. It's either stripped or the, oh, no. Wait a minute. or the bolt was too long for the hole. Oh yeah, the bolt's just too long and it bound up inside the threads. So that could have broken through the casting if they kept tightening it. Ugh. Butchery, sheer butchery. Huh? Huh? No, it's not too long. The wrong bolt. Okay. We'll get the right bolt. All right. Um, that's the other knock sensor that's not tight. <laughs> this is, oh, it's actually comical. I, if you could see the butchery up front, there's not much lighting up here to see, but you'll see it when we get the engine out. I think we're ready. Uh, note, I've been wrong before, but I think we're ready. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, crap. We got... Yeah, I have to unbolt a couple things up front. The, the ABS pump is bolted to the subframe. Two bolts that can float there. And the cooler... It looks like a power steering cooler. Yeah. Power steering cooler can sit. That'll hang on this line. Oh, you know what? No, that's coming with us. Yeah, that's coming with us because it's attached to the rack. Okay, so just the ABS pump. Yeah. 
see, so the ABS pump is just going to float there on the line. So that shouldn't go anywhere. Maybe we'll tie it up. This is the power steering cooler. If you can see the disaster, the wiring harness is a mess. All cut and spliced in two different places. Ugh, not good. Yeah, all right. All right. So we're going to get the uh, our hydraulic table uh, underneath this and sort of get an idea of how we're going to do it. But the main thing is the table is going to sit between the subframe and the oil pan. We'll get some blocks to make sure we get it level. Mm, subframe is holding it in. There's only four big nuts for that. Um, and those will come down. I'm hoping this whole assembly will drop out. We're going to have the things to move out of the way. Transmission lines. Ugh. Maybe I'll just take this bottom one out and they'll come with us because they're kind of interlaced uh, inside of here quite poorly, I might add. But, uh, so we're going to do that. So we're going to get set up, finalize a couple little things, and we'll be back to drop this engine out right before your very eyes. All right, we are set up. Uh, let's see. The, the hydraulic table is, uh, we have it shimmed with uh, wood to get the level right between the subframe and the oil pan. Um, the torque tube there's a lot of leverage so I'm not sure if that torque tube is going to pull the engine down in the back and sort of give us a bad angle so Nick is back there he's going to hold that up you're watching us from a tripod right now so uh, we can have all hands free um, I'm going to take the subframe bolts off and hopefully we're going to lower the engine down nice and straight with the subframe now, I know I missed a lot of stuff, so as it comes down, we're probably going to be fishing stuff out of the way and maybe disconnecting things that we uh, forgot, so yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, crawling around under this lift isn't much fun, it's kind of one of the shortcomings of working with a four post lift, a drive on lift, but still, great lift to have if, uh, if you need to do any other kind of suspension work and whatnot. All right, here we go. Um, I'm going to start by using the impact gun and just take out the four bolts for the subframe and let's see where this, where this goes. <clears throat> Alrighty, we have uh, the subframe bolts out. Let me get this out of the way. Alright. So I'm going to start to lower the table and <laughs> see what happens. Um, you may hear Nick scream. I'm not sure if he's going to get crushed or not. But we'll find out. <laughs> oh, we're not touching the front boards. All the weights on the oil pan. Okay. I'm stable. Stable. Yeah. I am very unstable, but that's just me. Um, I hear wiring angle. Yeah, I hear, I hear stuff. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go up and take a look. Don't go away. I'm going to go a little more and check again. Uh, looks good. The harness is tight on the back of the engine, so we'll see. the ABS pump's trying to come down with us. Let's see, it should be floating pretty well up there. Okay, as suspected, uh, the ABS pump has the two front brake lines on it that are attached to the subframe. So I'm going to disconnect them from the ABS unit so those lines will come with the subframe and then I can hang the, uh, hopefully hang the ABS pump because we also have lines going to the rear of the car that will stay with the pump. And I don't want to take them all off, just the ones we need to. So I'm going to go do that right now. <laughs> okay, now I think I'm ready. Right. Down some more. I'm hearing some interesting noises. Let's look. It goes under the exhaust. Yeah, I see that. I thought that was... Dang it. So I have to unroute that whole harness. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, I disconnected most of this stuff, but I did not get it off the engine. And look, what is this now? Oh, another ground wire. Oh, dang it. All right. <laughs> I think that's it now. <clears throat> All right, down scope. Tie rods aren't going to clear. Yeah, I see that. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do about that, except maybe take the rack out right there. You know what I mean? Yes. Looks clear back here. Yeah, we're good up front, except the tie rods. Okay. We're officially removed from the car, however, these tie rods are going to be an issue. So we're going to remove the rack from the uh, subframe right here. I'm going to take the power steering cooler off first. All right. I'll just put these back in so I don't lose them. Laid my finger again. That wasn't much fun. But did it all for you, my loyal viewers. Brake lines. Yeah, we'll get those sorted out later. So I have just these two bolts. Um, there's nuts on the back. They look like 18 millimeter. Missing nut. Well, I know it's in there somewhere. Now this should just cooperate. I like the black brake lines, black coated, pretty cool. They're all bent, they were kind of mangled anyway, so we're gonna, we'll fix those up nice. All right, here's our rack. You don't need any more. Electric steering, anyone? Okay. There's our engine, clutch, and torque tube, and subframe assembly. Okay, for the grand finale, we're going to lift the car up and unveil this entire package. Okay, there it is. Um, I don't think I'm going to roll it out just yet. We'll leave it here. Well, I can move it forward here. Come on, baby. I think the throttle plate has been changed. I think it's a bigger throttle plate. Um, that's a real crazy idle, so I, I'm pretty sure there's a, uh, an aftermarket cam in it. Well, we're going to pull it apart, see what it has in it, so we know how to proceed. Um, I'd love to talk him into making it stock again, but I think he wants to do a little bit while the engine's out. And we have a mess to clean up um, from, from the, last, the last time this engine was uh, removed. Here's the nut I was missing. We've got some of these are, are mine that, that I disconnected, but I bent that a little bit. But it was already bent a little bit, so... We have a lot, a lot to do. Uh, we'll keep you up to date as we move along on this car. We'll have the heads off uh, next week. 
and uh, he'll take those. We might even take the bumper off. There's a couple scratches he wants to fix. He'll take the bumper to his body shop while we're doing the rest of the work. Um, come take a look at the transmission uh, that connects to the back of this thing, and we'll show you what we're doing with this. Right now, it's just it's kind of it's bolted down, but it's just put together as a test fit for the to check the shifter. We put a stage two kit in it, and all of that is uh, most of it's in there already. But we have some more uh, new uh, uh, three uh, three level uh, synchronizer rings, and uh, most of the stuff just has to go back in the transmission. So I'm going to pull the um, pull the case back off again, put the sealer on it, and that's pretty much ready to go. The shifter is a real pain to get set up in this thing. Because you have to put the, deep, the screws back in, these long screws that go in and they sort of support the, uh, the shifter mechanism. But that's not the worst of it. Um, it just goes together like any other transmission. It's my first T56 uh, Tremec transmission, so it's kind of interesting. It runs on, uh, uses automatic transmission fluid, not gear oil. The differential is over here. That uses gear oil. That's coming apart next to make sure that's okay. Might have to put bearings in it. Uh, but that's it. Even a little fluid pump that drives the uh, the, the uh, transmission fluid through uh, through the transmission. Pretty nice design. Uh, Z06 transmission is very strong. The one above this one is the Magnum or the 6060, and then there's a Magnum version, which I guess is uh, good for 1,200 horsepower or something. Really nice stuff. So that's it for today. Hope you watched to the end and got to see us pull the engine out. Obviously, if you're watching me now, you watched the end. Pretty simple really so uh, thank you again for watching subscribe like if you haven't already share this video with Corvette fans everywhere all around the world and uh, we'll get this community going too we may have some more Corvettes coming in now that I've done this I don't know but uh, we like the European stuff but a little change of pace is good we'll see you next week